Sit next to you. Don't get it. Yeah. You're ready to go. Stop, Amy. <laughs> yeah, we're all here. Okay. Okay, we'll call public works to order. We will start out with item 29 on tonight's agenda. Resolution 2023-0458. Resolution to approve bid of Pro Electric Incorporated for street lighting conversion project that includes Beecher Street string lighting, a community development block grant project in the city of West Dallas in the amount of one million four hundred forty one thousand three hundred thirty dollars and sixteen cents move to approve second it's been moved and seconded is there any discussion Mr. Uh, Mr. Um, Dave is this the um, stuff that was going over by West Dallas Sheen and Sausage and all that stuff is that what this is so yes yeah, it's okay. part of it's um, part of a larger package we did in an economy of scale understanding is the big came in high last time and the city canceled the project so we incorporated it with our normal annual all uh, street lighting conversion in other parts of the city and okay. the yeah. port that portion of the big came in uh, less than it was the last time so gotcha. we, okay. we yeah. were all, successful in our all of that isn't going down to yeah. okay. but overall the whole project is Okay, thank you. okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, <laughs> motion carries. And item 30, resolution 2023-0478, resolution removing fee for dropping off any quantity of brush at public works self-service location. Mr. Aye. Chair? Yes. Uh, thank you, Dave, for bringing the brush fact sheet. Um, I need some clarification. I believe the gentleman who spoke in council chambers had said, you know, his once a year tree trimming, he should be able to come and drop off. If I am correct, isn't it during our brush collection and spring collection that we do offer that without charge? So we do offer between um, June and up to October, we get one free cubic yard of brush that we collect on the recycling day every other week so that in that case if they wanted to they could bring one cubic yard either into each uh, either drop-off center or they could leave it out on the recycling day up to one cubic yard anything over that they would be uh, eligible you know to be charged okay I thought I, I must have misunderstood because I thought that the yard is open that we can just dispose of that brush during the brush collection cycle. So there's, um, I guess, clarification maybe is regarding yard waste and brush. Okay. Yard waste is, you know, kind of a weed, um, leafy type debris. Mm -hmm. And we do have a spring yard waste collection as well in the fall. And that is where patrons can put that either on the street right away mm -hmm. for a period of time and we push it and we collect it or the second option is that they can come to our drop-off site at any time when it's open any season and dispose of their drop-off brush on another hand is collected for free one cubic yard or less during the recycling day from the month of june in this case to about uh september <clears throat> So during that time, that would offer free services for that um, living unit. Uh, otherwise, they can call for a bulk collection, which we would collect <clears throat> and we would pick up and service at the residence, at their location for a fee based on the amount of uh, cubic yards that they have. But again, it's they can always drop it off too at any time, any you know that we're open, a uh, one cubic yard or less. Okay. A brush. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. you. Got anything else? So, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, please, um, please. So we do have an attachment here. I just want to kind of do a little synopsis. Item number one is the number of labor hours. So I we listed staff did an awesome job. Uh, I want to thank them. Um, with their detailed information, but labor hours that has been accumulated for what? The service that we provide and free brush collection during the months of June to fall every other week. So these are the staff hours 
that it requires us to provide that service. Number two, item number two is how much brush collection quantities of cubic yards do we take in annually? So roughly in 2021 at the drop-off sites, people came in and they disposed of about 700 cubic yards in 2021 and 2022 about 520 cubic yards. Now how many customers do we serve at the drop-off center? That's the next item. Uh, about 285 in 2021 and 2022, about 220. Now we do have repeat customers, and that's a minimal percentage there, roughly 2% or so. Uh, revenue, how much revenue does this uh, generate with the fee schedule? Um, income for those people that have over one cubic yard, or more and they want to dispose of it at the Morgan drop-off site when eligible or at the drop-off site on McGew Avenue. For 2021, roughly $4,300. 2022, $3,700. So even though that this is somewhat um, smaller amounts than what you deal with with the overall budget, it still offsets the total amount of money that we are charged by a contractor to uh, process. So we have to get rid of this yard waste as well as brush, uh, trees, that sort of thing, that debris. So in 2021, we paid approximately $58,700. That was inclusive with everything that's at the drop-off site and also everything that we collect at the residence, whether it be during the recycling day or bulk collection. In 2022, a little bit um, less there, 45, about $46,000. So what are the kind of the concerns or what issues that you folks have to think about is, number one, there is no uh, limit now. So according to the ordinance at this time, we only take up to eight cubic yards. As written now or what's being pros, uh, proposed tonight is there's no quantity or no limit. So XYZ person who lives in a certain living unit, they could have basically free access to drop off any amount of material at these drop off sites. And that's the I guess the decision that the council have to make uh, on that. Obviously, when you do have no fees, you are going to have increase in demand of these services. You're going to have, I suspect, increased amount of brush material from a lot of individuals. So um, that's potentially may uh, increase our costs as well. And then also for the logistics, um, given the potential increase in demand, we may have to have more containers at that location or locations at the Morgan Drop-Off site or McGew Avenue. So usually, lot, I, you know, we get questions of uh, what does other communities do? <laughs> so of those, uh, we did, staff did, uh, contacted a few communities. Uh, looks like South Milwaukee charges $3 per visit for anything. Wauwatosa is kind of in line. They do have permits, but they also charge for brush collection. Uh, one to three cubic yards is $20, $5 more than what we charge. Um, three to six cubic yards is $30. We charge 30, the same. And six to 10 cubic yards is 50. We charge for six to eight cubic yards, $50. So they do allow for more quantities to be accepted. Uh, then they do offer 10 to 18 cubic yards at 90. Um, Milwaukee, six cubic yards or less, it's free. And I, I, we're trying to verify, is that once per day? Is that, you know, once per week? And then any, anything over that is the quantities that were listed there in the fees, uh, $20 for a pickup truck and 25 for a trailer. And then on the next page is the fees that's being proposed. So um, Attorney Decker, uh, again, we just eliminated the brush so that would not be identified within the fee structure. So there would not be a uh, um, 
a quantity or maximum <laughs> quantity for brush. It would be one of those where an individual is just, you know, free to uh, deliver at one of the drop-off sites. So that's, a, I guess, an issue or concern that you'll have to address. Mr. Sure. Alderman Stansky. Um, when people drop this off, they unload it themselves, right? We don't have anybody from the yes. city that does yep. it. It's all on their own. Yep, less than one cubic yards or anything over that as well, up to eight cubic yards. It's the responsibility of that patron okay. or that customer. Yep. And then I do have one other question for you. Just this, this came to my, my thought here. Can we do a controlled burn on this stuff at the facility? Burn this on a daily, weekly basis? Uh, you know, that would be, I would suspect, prohibitive, you know, to do that for various reasons of fire. Uh, hazards, but also the DNR, you're polluting, so you would you're have to have wood, you're polluting branches, yeah. tree, leaves, you know. Yeah. But that within a community that I suspect something would be pretty yep. that's what mm -hmm. I wanted to ask. Are you done today? Anyone else? Mr. Chair. Um, Dave, thank you again. Um, I have concerns <clears throat> of adopting this as it's written right now. I believe. The reason why we brought this forward two years ago to change and charge is because we were having additional expenses and whatnot. We can't have a carte blanche in the city to say, okay, you can cut down, as that gentleman said, I have 21 trees. He could cut down 21 trees tomorrow and bring it, and it's everybody else's dime that has to pay for that. Not to say that he's doing that, but you multiply that amount to the amount of citizens we have here. When I'm looking at the data here, change from 21 to 23, I mean, money's collected for brush, 39 people. I mean, am I correct on that? That at the drop-off yards, it's 30. So no, far, so far, this year. Right, yeah. but I mean, we, we've really come in, we're out of that season, I'm a gardener. So I mean, mm -hmm. most of that stuff is taken care of. We're in bloom right now. It's not until fall that we're gonna see you know, maybe more trimming, and you do your trimming in spring, you don't typically do it in fall. So not to go on too much about it, I just don't think that there's structure, uh, Alderman Stefanski, to how this is written, where, we, where we're, we're not gonna take it on the chin, meaning all the taxpayers, and have a problem with the budget for, for Dave's department as well. Um, can I ask you, Alderman Stefanski, how many people reached out to you um, besides three, that gentleman? Three, uh, three total. Okay. Three total. And may I ask any of the other committee members, have any constituents reached out with complaints that our yard is not allowing? None to me. None? No. None. Okay, and I've had none too. So there's three residents, and not, not to minimize that. I just don't think at this time I would support it as it is, and, and truth be told, you brought up Milwaukee, Milwaukee County resident. I go to the Milwaukee yard often. You know, if it's six yards what? and it's over, yeah. So it is These what it is. These are on camera, you know. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> but we're, we're Milwaukee County. So um, with that being said, um, that's, that's just my two cents on it, and, and I guess Dave, how will this impact your department? I, you, you gave it, but is there is there a... Well, it's just more demand on the individuals. So they do have other responsibilities. They do shuttle uh, vehicles from point A to point B for a collection uh, when they have to service those uh, vehicles. Uh, taking monies, that sort of thing. The frequency of uh, customers. You know, there will be a line, but there may be a larger line. I can't say that for sure, but... I think the use, I think individuals will be more prone to use the, the Morgan drop-off site as well as the McGue site. So then rather than having maybe one individual there, you may have to have two. You'll have to potentially have uh, to purchase additional 40-yard roll-off containers. Currently we have two for this designated material. You may have to have maybe a, a third, a spare to change it to keep up with the demand. So. Okay, and to add to that too, say we have a big storm like we had last year and all those trees come down on, on per personal property, we'd have to take that overflow of all of 
that as well, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah, we would, we would attempt to help like we did with the, uh, the storm that we experienced the last few times. Um, but again, that was something that we discussed with the mayor and okay. council. All right, I'm finished, yes, thank you. Sure. But the residents shouldn't have to pay for that storm damage if they got it in their yard. I don't think that's they did. It. No, no, I'm just saying, that's my, that's my point. If they're cleaning up after that, they shouldn't have to pay to bring it in to the facility. Right. Um, and also, thank you for showing that Franklin, New Berlin, and Cudahy don't charge any fees. Right. Yeah. So yep. um, that's a good thing to know, and they're in Milwaukee County as well. So. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't say uh, it. New like, Berlin's not, but Franklin like and Cudahy are. her, right. than him. Like working a flight deck here. Like <laughs> I know, like, okay, bring it in. <laughs> Other person, Ranky. Okay, thank you. Um, I also thank you for the fact she gave. Mm -hmm. And that's um, my staff, Tim Lass, basically, and Andy Heitzer. Well, it takes a bit of doing to put it all together. I'm also reluctant to support this. Um, basically, you're telling us that the fees we're charging don't even cover the cost to the city. Correct. And that is my concern. Not only for the drop-off site, right. but even for the bulk collections. Right. It's a fraction of what it actually costs to have the staff and equipment there. Right. And if um, one of our residents is um, has a number of brush, there are ways he could do it uh, that would be advantageous to him if he figured it out. Uh, anyway, um, I'm concerned because we're not covering the cost to the city. The burden is on the city then. Also, I'm also concerned about the many contractors that would abuse this. And I know there are contractors that do abuse this uh, periodically because I, I knew of some. Um, they're in business for themselves and yet the city is paying for, for them to get rid of their brush mm -hmm. as, you, as I have indicated. So, and I'm also happy that you included different communities we're not alone in this. There's other communities that also are charging. And um, it's important to me that we cover the costs. We cover the costs. And like older person Stefanski said, there are other communities that no fees too, <clears throat> but it's a council decision if you know how you want to subsidize this cost. But. You wait your turn. That's, That's my turn. You. You wait and then the mayor. Okay. Okay. This is, I, I share all the person Grisham's um, concerns also. It's, sorry, but the guy was here. We're paying for his brush, long and short of it. Um, you know, because we still have to pay for all of that brush that's going to get ground up. And, anyway, and I think there's going to be a lot of cheating, as we discussed. I think it was Monday. I think it's going to be. Floodgates are open, and hey, West Dallas is not charging, and let's go there. So my position right now would be to not pass this, but I'll wait for it to come to vote. And Mayor Devine is next, and then Alderman Stefanski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first, unless something's changed, Milwaukee County was in no Milburn County, because I remember getting complaints from people in the west side of the city when New Berlin was burning, and it was blowing over, and obviously it was probably in the right direction. Um, Alderman Grisham really said a lot of what I was going to say, but honestly, when I'm when I was looking at these numbers and, and find that we're only really recovering about ten percent of the costs, on, correct? I mean, I'm almost thinking these should be raised <laughs> yeah. rather than waived, and and I also will say that in the sense that we are in the middle right now of lobbying for the largest shared revenue, local funding, government financing bill that has been in probably two decades in Madison, and I think it looks very foolish to say we, we really could use more money because we're facing one to three million dollar budget gaps every 
year as we start the process, and then we're going to waive a fee. We're going to waive a revenue stream. And that's just concerning to me. I don't think that that's good optics. I don't think that that sends a good message, um, especially with the added potential of having to purchase new equipment. Um, that makes that, that gap between the monies collected and the brush process even bigger. So I've, I've got some hard work. Oh, Mr. Fansky. Um, two things that I forgot to two two residents who did contact me mentioned that and Dan, I'm gonna look at you for this. Um Ron. When, <laughs> Sorry. You know, Bins has to go to a number of houses for cleaning up that are not being taken care of. Okay. Two of the residents said, Well, if they're gonna start they're gonna make me pay for this to bring it myself to the dump, then I'm just not gonna maintain my yard anymore. That means you're going to get a call then, correct? Correct. Or they'll illegally dump it somewhere. Is what yeah. See. We had it today at a vacant house. Someone dumped brush and a huge 36-inch TV because they knew the house was vacant. So and we had a contractor clean it up. And just out of curiosity, how many houses do you go to every year that have to be cleaned up brush-wise? Do you have an estimate? I, I wouldn't know offhand. Is it a large number? For brush that we have to write up, I would say a large number. I'd say hundreds. Okay. Thanks. Anyone else? We haven't heard from you on. Oh, I'm gonna. No, pretty much. Our newest what, member. I have to ask you. Mayor beat me to it on that because, like you said, like you were saying, if we ask for more money and then you say we're giving away thing, we're giving away services. Got it. Then you're going to, we're going to look very foolish. All the person Christian. Um, you get the last word, not Vince. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Alderman Stefanansky, we'll start here. <laughs> I just, um, you brought Dan into the mix and the amount of properties that are neglected and whatnot. I think with code enforcement, that's what that department does. I don't think it's like the example of the gentleman who came in and said, hey, I want to trim my, my beautiful yard of 21 trees and, and bring it uh, to, to the yard. Uh, of all of those complaints and weeds and brush and all that, those people are cited and or made to clean that up. I understand that we sometimes have to pick up things. That's why when somebody goes on social media and says, hey, what do we do with a mattress? Well, we don't want to see mattresses all over the city. Um, so there is some grace sometimes given. And I think that even at the yard, there's a little bit of grace. Uh, so overall, like I said, I just want to reiterate my reasons why I'm not going to support this. And if anybody else has anything else, I, um, I'm done. You sure? I'm positive. <laughs> I, I'd like to make a motion to deny. Is okay, what I'm motion to deny. Do. Is there a second? Second. Okay, the motion is tonight. All in favor, Mr. say Chair, aye. Oh, sorry, on that motion, um, and I'll be very brief, but, and I'm not just trying to get the last word. You go ahead. <laughs> you can have that I'm last word. I'm just wondering, word. you know, you mentioned we recoup costs and we have to send a contractor out <clears throat> to mow a lawn, or, and I'm just curious, since we're talking about this one, was the last time we adjusted that rate? And looking at some of these numbers, I'm going to ask you as a committee if you're, if you don't have to tell me now, but just reach out if there's an interest in revisiting these trying to make because we're, we're kind of forced right now where we're at to have user-based expenses on you know we, we can't have free things and, absolutely um, I just think if, if there's an interest we should maybe read those pieces and, and get that. thank you thank you thank you all right we have a motion and a second to deny all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed aye uh, motion carries four to one motion to adjourn motion thank to adjourn. you Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned. Okay. Let's see if I get her stuff together here. Any reason I'm lost here? Do you need a cheat sheet here? I do. No, I have it printed. Oh. Where the heck are we? Page seven. Yes, I can. Okay.
Okay, Public Sa Safety Committee is called to order. All members are present. Uh, we're going to go out of order to item 39, 2023 <coughs> Class B Tavern Seasonal Temporary Premise Extension and Temporary Public Entertainment Premises Permit. Request for Doppelgangers Incorporated doing business at Stops Bar and Grill, 1753 South 68th Street from June 7th, 2023 to October 29th, 2023. Would you like to come up? Sure. Thank you. And if I could just say something before. Please do. Um, I think it was early this year where the, um, the tender extension hours and things were adjusted in the time period. And I believe um, she was given incorrect information when she first came in. And so at the last meeting, she wasn't here, so you approved the I did not know that I was supposed to be here because you know I always show up. That's okay. So then, Things happen. So that she's here now because of the extension past Labor Day and the hours of operation. Right. For Sunday, um, and because the new hours are weekdays till eight and weekends. Correct. Yeah, I caught that, and that was one of the things that I was going to bring up. So I just wanted to explain that and apologize. No, that's, that's okay, because it's, we're all living the change of... Thank you. <laughs> so if, if this is approved, we have to make that amendment, or is it just noted and you take care of that if, at the clerk's level? Um, if you approve what she's asking for, then we would just issue a, the permit with the extended days... Okay. Hours. Okay. So I we'll have to amend it. So eight, and I really don't have a lot of bands. I'm one band mm -hmm. August twentieth right now. So it's just so people can go outside, especially in the fall, mostly. Well, the yeah, end of the summer. But okay. and if the, the, if it's till eight, I'm good with that. Also, um, what are you going, planning on having after Labor Day? You have it listed till October 29th. Is there a certain I thing? it was a six-month thing. Okay. That's, what I that, was that's one thing we'll have to visit to at, at permit level because you wouldn't need to come here if that was the case, with the exception of the error on, on the time. So um, I would make a motion to approve with the amendment of Sundays only till 8 p.m. and only through Labor Day. So if I can just say, a lot of people come in, they bring their um, harvest, after Harvest Fest, their scarecrow, I mean, it can be a little later, even. Do you just want Harvest Fest weekend, or are you asking for Sure, more? or, yeah, that would be okay. Yeah, I would specify then it would be Harvest Fest weekend. Sure. Uh, will be the one, and is, do we have a specific date? Like, I don't want any bands after. I gotcha. Isn't it the third weekend in September? I think it's the... Oh, I just read it. I, uh, we can look it up and I can put that. Yeah, if we, if we can just add that. So it won't go through October. It will go probably until the end of September. Yeah, whatever that. That's whatever I can, whatever's legally the new thing right. or whatever. That's going to be great. Okay. Um, I'll second it. Okay, so there's a motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you for You're welcome. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you for taking your time to come back. Sure. All right. Now we'll go back to the order. We have item 36, 2023-0359-2023-2025, new operator's license, bartender class D operator, application for Samantha LeBan, new application after waiting six months from prior denial on September 20th. Samantha, come on up. I remember you. Yes. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing really well. And... Uh, Obviously, you waited your six-month uh, period. One of the reasons why you were denied is I believe you had some probation that was supposed to end in November 2022, and we just wanted to make sure that you satisfied that. Yes, um, all done. Can you give us an update? Yes, so I'm completely off uh, no probation, nothing, everything's handled. Um, I just been still maintaining working as best I can. Um, obviously, I think last time I was, talk I was really adamant about um, I'm just basically doing this for right now. I don't plan on bartending the rest of my life, but right now I'm just doing it to like kind of, because to get a uh, different job. So this is something that I need to like, obviously have a living. Um, so like I said, this is definitely a temporary thing. Is on, um, I'm very happy. I like bartending, but like I said, I wanted something more career path oriented. And this mm -hmm. is kind of, it's a stepping stone to get me there. 
Okay, so you satisfied your probation, any of the other requirements that, and you've had no incidences since then, everything's good, yep. life is good? Life is good. All right, uh, that's the only questions I have for you. Do any of the other committee members have a question? Other person, Grisham. Alderman Rowe. There, did I read that works or the CCAP, right? The three OWIs, correct? Um, or was there one pending? No. So I think it's pending. You just had the probation for Oh, okay. Yeah, right. That's but, what we were waiting for the completion of. Yep. Yeah. Oh, so it's two OW. No, what's the third offense? There's one in 07, one in 10, and then one in 2021. That's, that's three. The one we were waiting for the. Right, but that's still three OWIs. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've only done two, two people that had three OWIs. I don't know how the rest of this committee feels that we granted licenses to. I'll just leave it at that. And there are very unusual circumstances that we granted them. Anyone else? Um, yes. no. Madam Chair. Alderman uh, Ranke. Do you currently have a driver's license? Mm -hmm. I have occupational. Very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, where have, do you uh, plan on working? Mm -hmm. Where do you plan on working? Uh, well, right now I'm working at the bar with them. Um, but right now this is kind of something that I've been struggling with for the last however long, um, a lot of places won't hire me because of my driving record. So that's a little bit difficult to kind of, like I said, transition out of bartending, but it's something I have to pay my bills, obviously. So that being said, it's just something that has been a struggle a little bit because, you know, like usually they do a background record for your <clears throat> driving record. So um, right now I'm just kind of, so I'm doing like those promotional events like at like um, uh, just like samples and stuff like that just to kind of like stay busy during the day and then work at this bar at night. So but, I see. Yeah. Uh, also, um, I noted that you had a troubled past, mm -hmm. and it sounds like you are on the right track right now, and I commend you, Thank you. and hopefully that'll continue. Yes, it would definitely. Um, I guess my next question is sobriety. Mm -hmm. it, yep. Have uh, you there. met that requirement? Yeah, for sure. Also, uh, mm -hmm. concern about uh, past drug-related offenses. Mm -hmm. Um, that basically has been alleviated as well. Yes, I'm on the straight. I, Excellent. I, yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, so I would move for approval. Second. We have uh, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. So we have four to one. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. Okay, item 37, 2023 04 renewal operators license bartender class B operator application for Dewey Qualls. Is Dewey here? Okay, just I would have. first. Okay. Oh. Um, motion to hold. Okay, is there a second? A second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 We'll hold. Question, Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, on the record, it says citation stemming from that is pending, so we can't consider until. Correct, correct. And truth be told, if we may have a moment of discussion, um, well, no, we're not going to have a moment of discussion. I'm sorry. We'll leave it as at that. Everybody okay. has their notes. All right. So, um, okay. So we're holding 37. Uh, 38, 2023 renewal Class B Tavern License Application for Riviera of Wisconsin Incorporated, doing business as Riviera Lanes, 8600 West Greenfield Avenue, Agent Don Daughtery. Uh, yes, that's me. Hi, Don. Hi. How are you? Uh, good, how are you? Doing okay. So, um, you've come before public safety because there's a couple things that were noted on your record, and would you mind offering an explanation to the current charge that's on there? Of, uh, I believe it is uh, OWI? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, I mean, it did happen, so I don't know what, I mean, you know. What, when did this occur? Uh, October. October. Okay. September, October. I so remember. from September, October to, to now, have you had any rehabilitation, any classes, anything that you can offer 
Uh, I mean, I haven't, I mean, other than, I guess, really just changing behavior from that. Um, okay. So, I mean, I don't drink when I'm working, so this was when I was not working. Okay. Um, obviously, well, I mean, a lot of bars, you know, bartenders drink and they work. Um, right. So I don't do that. Um, I have a lot of other work to do there than to be doing that. Um, so I haven't done that med bar tenant since I've been 18. Okay. Um, so that's been a long time. And then stemming from that, this uh, case, um, obviously I don't drink and drive anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so basically I had moved and now I, I drive instead of walking. Um, and so now I just, I haven't drank and drove and I've gotten an Uber a couple of times just because okay. I can't. Drive. Well, mean, it sounds like you're making responsible choices. I mean, that was your your only uh, only charge of OWI in your life. Yeah, that's correct. And then okay. uh, I know, I, well, I mean, it came back on on the background and stuff. And there, I you know have an attorney for that case, and I, that's mm -hmm. not over with yet. But like you said, it's pending, so it's okay. All right. Well, I don't have an issue uh, beyond sure. my questions. <clears throat> Go ahead, Alderman Rowe. Um, we're showing suspended license, driver's license. Uh, yeah, I have an occupational license, so I can drive. But I, yeah, there's a six month suspension, I think. I mean, is, is that not the same thing? I don't know. Oh, yeah. I wish we had. A... I'm pretty sure they suspended my license, and then I applied here for the occupational, and then they granted me that. Yeah, so you, you have to, on an occupational, you just I'm within out. the windows of your working hours, okay. So is this part of your occupation tonight? Uh, it's actually in my hours because I'll be driving home about the time that I'd be, okay. uh, that I'd be leaving. Um, there's, I forget how many hours, I have to look on my license, it would tell me. Okay. And I would think that. I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah, and I would think that, you know, this has to do with your business, that yeah. you would be able to drive. So does anyone else have any other questions? I move to approve. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you all.